In this video, you're going to learn how to graph the secant graph and the cosecant graph, as well as secant and cosecant graphs that have been transformed, like stretched or shrunk or shifted. And we're going to do this all from the perspective of using the uh, table and the unit circle. So let's go through some examples together and you'll see how this works. So if you've already learned about the unit circle, you know that on the unit circle, the cosine of an angle, we look at the x-coordinate of the point. And the sine, we look at the y-coordinate of the point on the unit circle. And the tangent, we look at the y over the x. But here, in this video, we're talking about the secant and the cosecant. And the secant is the reciprocal of the x-coordinate, or you could say 1 over x. And the cosecant is the reciprocal of the y-coordinate, or you can say 1 over y. So what we can do when we graph our secant graph, let's start with that one first, is we can look at graphing the cosine graph, and we're going to use that as a template, and I'll show you what I mean. So with the cosine, at zero degrees, the cosine is going to be equal to one, okay? And at 90 or pi over two, the cosine is going to be equal to zero. And then at pi or 180, the cosine is going to be negative one. And then at three pi over two, cosine is equal to zero. And then at two pi, you're back to one. And so you might want to memorize this table, but you can also get it back from the unit circle. So let's graph that on our graph here. So at zero, we're here at one. At pi over two or 90, we're here at zero. At pi, we're down here at negative one. And then at three pi over two, we're back to zero. And then at two pi, we are at one. And I'm just gonna draw this as a dashed or kind of like a dotted line here. And you're already familiar with this cosine graph. But it keeps going, so you can kind of do a little bit more here if you want to kind of repeat this pattern. But remember that secant is the reciprocal of cosine, or you can say that it's 1 over x. So what happens here is, you see how where cosine is equal to 0? 1 divided by 0 is what? Well, you can't divide by 0, so that's undefined. So what happens is we get a vertical asymptote wherever the cosine is equal to zero. And that, in this case, it's where it crosses the x-axis, right? So I'm just drawing some dashed or dotted lines for our vertical asymptote. Now, the other key points are the turning points or the bends in the cosine graph. So you see right here where it bends or turns? This is where cosine is equal to one. And what's one divided by one? Well, that's still gonna be one. So the secant graph and the cosine graph are gonna coincide at this point. But you see how the graph is kind of like going down here, the cosine graph, and see how cosine is like about a half right here? Well, what's one divided by a half? Well, when you divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So one divided by a half is actually gonna be two, so we're gonna have a point up here. Same thing here, if this is a half, this is gonna be two. And you can see as this gets smaller and smaller, when you divide by a smaller and smaller number, overall that fraction actually becomes larger. Like if this is one fourth, one divided by one fourth is gonna be four, which means that you're gonna be up here. And so you can see what's happening here is that this graph is bending like this. Okay, and then same thing over here, the graph is gonna bend the other direction like that. So you can see that, again, they coincide at the maxes and the mins for cosine, and it bends that opposite direction. So this is what we call our parent function. This is our secant graph. Let's talk about the domain and range for a minute. So the domain, it's going to be all real numbers except for where there's these gaps here, where these vertical asymptotes are. So we can say domain, all real numbers, but x cannot be pi over 2, and then we keep adding pi to get to the next vertical asymptote. So we're going to say x cannot be pi over 2 plus pi n, where n is an element of the set of integers. Okay, so n is like 1, 2, 3. The range, that's what the y values can be. And you can see it's gonna go from negative infinity up to negative one, okay? Including negative one. And then it jumps up here to positive one and greater. So we're gonna say union from one to positive infinity. So let's take a look at the cosecant graph next. Okay, now taking a look at cosecant, we're gonna to go to the sine a graph first to use as a template, because remember sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. So on the unit circle, we say that the sine is the y coordinate. So at zero degrees or zero radians, the sine is gonna be equal to zero. And then at 90 or pi over two, the sine is gonna be equal to one. 
and then at 180 or pi, the sine is going to be equal to 0. And at 3 pi over 2 or 270, the sine is equal to negative 1. And then at 2 pi, we've made one complete cycle or one complete circle here, and we're back to 0 for our sine. So let's go ahead and sketch that as a dashed or dotted line on our graph here. We're going to use that as a template. So uh, 0, 0 is going to be right here at the origin. And then pi over 2, 1 is going to be right here. And 180, 0 is back to the x-axis. Uh, 3 pi over 2 is at negative 1. And 2 pi is back to 0. So again, just drawing this lightly to use as a guide. And then remember, just like we talked about uh, previously at, with secant, whenever this crosses the x-axis, or whenever you could say that sine is equal to 0, because the cosecant is 1 over y, or 1 over the sine, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So that means that we're going to get a vertical asymptote wherever you see the sine graph crossing the x-axis. Okay, so I'll just draw those in there. And then we also talked about that where the graph bends, that the cosecant and the sine are going to coincide, just like the cosine and the secant coincided. And then the graph just bends the other direction and again, we talked about that because as this gets smaller, like 1 divided by half would be 2, or 1 divided by 1 fourth would be 4. And so this actually, the cosecant graph is actually getting larger. Now here, where it's a negative 1 half, 1 divided by negative 1 half is negative 2. And so that's why this is bending the other direction. And then keep in mind that because the sine graph you know, continues forever and ever in both directions, the cosecant graph will also continue on and on. But here what I've done is just drawn one cycle or one period. So let's talk about the domain and the range for a moment. Remember, the domain is going to be all real numbers, but x cannot be where these gaps are, where these vertical asymptotes are. So it can't be at 0 or pi or 2 pi. So it's basically at multiples of pi, so we could say pi times n, where n is an element of the set of integers. Okay, that's what that z represents. And then the range we're looking at the y values, and again, it looks like you're going from negative infinity to negative 1, including negative 1, and then it jumps up to 1 on up to positive infinity, and so that's your range. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through two problems, one cosecant and one secant graph with transformations, and I'm going to show you how to work with this table to get a good sketch of your graph. Okay, for this first example, we're going to graph y equals 2 secant 1 half the quantity x minus pi plus 1. So we're going to work with transformations, but first what we're going to do is we're going to graph a cosine graph in this form, a cosine b x minus h plus k, and we're going to use that to graph our secant graph. So remember, we go to our table, and we're going to put in our basic values for cosine. And remember, cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle. So this is going to be 1, and then to 0, to negative 1, to 0, back to 1. So 1, 0, negative 1, uh, 0, and back to 1. Okay, but now we're going to look at the transformation. So imagine instead of graphing secant, we're graphing cosine. So this a value is like a vertical stretch. It's like the amplitude. And so what it does, because it's affecting the, the y values, this vertical direction, we're going to multiply all these y values by 2. So that's going to make this 2, 0, negative 2, 0, and 2. And I'm just going to cross out those old y values. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the 1 half. Now the 1 half, whatever is grouped with the x, okay, it's like with the x, it has the opposite effect. What I mean by that is it looks like you're multiplying by one half. You're actually going to be multiplying the x values or this horizontal direction by the reciprocal 2 over 1. So I'm going to multiply all these x values by 2. This is going to be 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. And I'm just going to cross out those old x values. Now I'm going to go to this h value. Now the h value is going to shift the graph left and right. But again, because this group with the x, it has the opposite effect. The minus pi is actually going to shift the graph right pi, which means I'm going to add pi to all the x values because the x controls left and right. So if I add pi here, this is going to be pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and 5 pi. And let's just cross out those old x values. And then lastly, we're going to work with this k value here, this 1, and that's going to shift the graph up 1. 
Of course, vertical direction, that's affecting the y values. So we're going to add 1 to the y values here. So that's going to put us at 3, 1, negative 1, 1, and 3. And let's cross off those old y values. So now we have our coordinates for our cosine graph. And so let's go ahead and plot those. So pi, uh, it looks like we're counting by pi's on the x-axis. So I'm just going to label this pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, etc negative pi. And this is like 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we're plotting pi 3, so that's going to put us right here. 2 pi we're at 1. 3 pi we are at negative 1, so right here. 4 pi we are at positive 1. And 5 pi we're back to 3, right about here. So I'm just going to sketch this cosine graph. And remember, it repeats, so then it would come back down here like so, and this point would be like right over here. Okay, and it, and it keeps repeating, right? But what we're going to think about now is we're going to think about this midline. You see this midline that kind of divides the cosine graph um, in half? We can think of that kind of like our new x-axis. And remember when the secant graph and the cosine graph, remember when the cosine was 0, 1 over 0 was undefined? So where it crosses this like new x-axis here, this midline, you can think of that as like our, our x-axis and our parent function. And so that's where our vertical asymptotes are going to be. So it's going to cross right here at 2 pi, over here at 4 pi, over here at 6 pi, et cetera, forever and ever. And then now what we can do is we can graph our secant graph. And remember how the secant and the cosine, they coincide at those turning points or those places where the graph bends, and so we can get a good graph. So there's a lot of lines on here, but the dashed ones, we don't really, that's not really part of our graph, we're just using that as a guide. The actual graph are these parabola-looking type shapes, okay? So now let's talk about the domain and the range for a minute. So the domain, this part can sometimes be tricky for students. The domain is going to be all real numbers, okay, all reals, but x cannot be where these asymptotes are. So we have an asymptote at 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi. You can see that's multiples of 2 pi. So it can't be 2 pi times n, where n is an element of the set of integers. The range, the y values, are going to go from negative infinity up to negative 1, including negative 1, and then it picks up over here at 3 and goes higher than that. So from 3 on up to positive infinity. Now, a question you might have in your mind right now is, Mario, why did you do this first and then this and then this and then this? Is it just because you're reading from left to right? Well, no. When you learn about transformations, you have to think about how you're building the function. Like if you start with your parent function, you know, that what's the order of transformations. Now, you can do this in a slightly different order. You could do uh, this first, okay, and then this second, and then this third, and then this fourth. Or you could do this first, and then this second, and then this third, and then this fourth. The, what I recommend, though, is that you do the um, horizontal stretch or shrink first, and, th and then the shift followed, you know, after that. And then I always do the vertical shift up and down last, okay, that, that's going to always occur last. But just to keep it simple, when it's in this form here, you can just basically work from left to right and you're going to get the correct um, graph. Let's take a look at another example involving cosecant. Okay, for number two, we've got y equals negative cosecant pi over two times the quantity x plus one minus one. If you're getting the hang of this, see if you can try this one on your own. And while you do that, I just wanted to mention that if you like the way that I explain things and you want to go deeper with me, uh, I've got an Algebra 2 slash College Algebra course, uh, link in the description below, and I go through a typical Algebra 2 slash College Algebra curriculum. There's about 85 lessons in that course, and I take you step by step by step, each concept building on the previous with teaching, examples, some practice that you can do on your own, and we'll go through those together as well. So check that out if you're interested. And then if you just want to support the videos that I'm putting up here on my Mario's Math Theory YouTube channel, I just strongly uh, encourage you to join as a channel member. So for a few dollars a month, 
you can support the videos that are being put up here. And I see all the different names and YouTube handles and channels and so forth that are uh, supporting the channel. And I really appreciate that. So let's go ahead and finish up this problem here. And what did you get when you graph this? Well, what we want to do because we're graphing the cosecant is we want to look at the sine graph because sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. And remember on the unit circle, the sine is the y coordinates. So we're going to be looking at these y values, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, back to 0. Then we're going to look at the transformations. And again, like I mentioned, I like to go in order a, b, h, k from left to right. This negative 1 is going to reflect it over the x-axis. It's going to make all the y values the opposite. So I'm going to multiply all these y values by negative 1. And I'm just going to cross out the old ones. Then this pi over 2 is going to be a, it's affecting the horizontal direction, but whatever is grouped with the x, remember this has like the, uh, the opposite effect, or in this case, the reciprocal effect. So instead of multiplying by pi over 2, we're going to multiply by 2 over pi to the x value. So this is going to be 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Cross out those old x values. The plus 1, again, group with the x, it's going to affect the x values, the horizontal direction, but it has the opposite effect. The plus 1 is going to actually shift everything left 1, which means I'm going to subtract 1 from all of these x values. And then lastly, this minus 1, that's going to be like a vertical translation. And this is going to shift the graph down one. So I'm going to subtract one from all our y values. Cross out the old ones. And now we have everything we need to graph our sine graph, which we're going to use as a template. So let's see. It looks like we're counting on the x-axis by ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And we'll count by ones here on our y-axis. So it looks like we have negative 1, negative 1 which is like right here, and 0, negative 2, which is right here, and 1, negative 1, which is right here, and 2, 0, which is right here, and 3, negative 1, which is right here. And of course, it repeats, so there would be a point here, and then a point like here, and a point here, and a point here. Okay, so you get the, the, the gist there, and so that's our sine graph, right? Not our, we haven't gotten to our cosecant yet, but this is like our sine graph, so that's what I'm drawing as a dashed or dotted line. And then I like to kind of look at this midline here, okay, it kind of divides it in half like that. Wherever the sine graph crosses the midline, that's where our vertical asymptotes are going to be. So there's going to be one right here at 5, there's going to be one right here at 3, see how it's crossing right here? It's going to be one at 1, there's going to be one here at negative 1, it's going to be one over here at negative 3, and so on, forever and ever. But our actual graph, because we were trying to graph cosecant, remember it's going to coincide at these turning points where the graph bends, and you can see that, that this uh, shaded one, this darker one that I'm drawing, that's our actual graph, that's our actual cosecant graph. Domain and range, domain all real numbers, right? But x can't be where our asymptotes are because there's a, a break in the graph, right? There's a a gap. So we, it can't be at, uh, let's see, 1, 3, 5. So it's basically it can't be 1 plus 2n, where n is an element of the set of integers. And the range is going to be, let's see, from negative infinity to negative 2, including negative 2. So we use the square bracket. And then it picks up over here at 0 to positive infinity. So including 0. To positive infinity. So great job if you're able to follow these examples. If you want to see more uh, about graphing these trig functions, not just uh, cosecant and secant, but sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, follow me to that comprehensive video I did right there, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over in that video.